Yep. Hi, my name is Miguel Brady, and my idea is Sharkbook. Um, it is a textbook resale company. So basically, I came up with this idea through having a lot of issues with trying to buy books online and then taking forever to get shipped, or going to the um, NSU bookstore and the prices being very expensive. So Sharkbook is affordable, it's an, and it's an easy way to buy and sell your used textbooks, and it is also located on campus. So my target market would be um, all of the undergraduate students here at NOVA, but specifically the ones that are currently buying textbooks. My value proposition is that um, Sharkbook does allow NSU students to buy used textbooks for a cheaper price, and um, it is located on campus. So I conducted a survey and I sent to the survey to 200 people and I got about 95 responses. And all the people that um, participated in the survey were current undergraduate students at NOVA. So one of my questions was, do most of your classes require you to get a textbook? And 50% of the people that responded did say that most of their classes required them to buy textbooks and 25% said all classes. So I think that is um, a pretty good number for me. And then another question was which classes require you to um, have textbooks. So I got, I was, I gave them the option of choosing more than one um, subject. And so as you can see, science did have the most and then math and then um, other. So I would try and focus on sciences, but I'm also going to focus on math and comp um, because I know like all freshmen, or almost all freshmen are required to take um, like those courses. And then another question was, if you were able um, to buy used textbooks on campus for a lower price, would you buy from a student from a business rather than the bookstore or, or an online company? And so for an online company, I gave an example of Amazon which I, because I know those are probably the two most used. And not, actually 90% of people did say they would buy um, their textbook from a student-run business, and 10% said they would buy from online, and zero said they don't buy textbooks, and zero said they would buy from the NSU bookstore. So some of my other survey responses was the time of day to buy or sell, and that was like around lunchtime, and I I have a feeling this is because no one has classes around that time. Um, would you buy used textbooks on campus for a cheaper price if you did have that option? And that was 95% said yes. Um, and then when would you buy or sell these textbooks? And 85% said at the beginning of the semester, 10% um, said at the eight week period, and 5% said at the end of the semester. So again, my main competitors are Amazon and Chegg and then um, the NSU bookstore. And these are some of my promotional materials. So these two flyers would be for my like graduating. <coughs> and at the bottom, it says if you take a picture of this flyer, you'll get 10% off your purchase. And this would probably be for the first one or two weeks of being open. And then I would have these same flyers, but um, without the promotional material, or the promotion for the rest of semesters and then this is my business card which has my information and the social media which I haven't created a social media page yet so that name is just an example so the operation and development location would be in the new dorm um, in the innovation center and this is just a map and then it's showing where the old soccer practice field that's where the new building will be and it is located right by all the residential dorms and pretty close to the UC, so there should be a good amount of traffic. So my hours of operation. So on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I would be open 12 to 3.30, and Tuesday, Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, these hours aren't set in stone yet because I do have to take into account classes and soccer practice. Um, so my plan for being open is the first three and last three weeks of um, each semester, and then also open for the week eight and nine to hit that 10% that said 
you know, maybe they need to buy books for their eight week classes or sell for their eight week class that they just finished. Um, so for my inventory, I'm looking at getting one to two bookshelves um, and one to two storage bins. And depending on our storage space and if it locks, I will also be getting locks for those storage bins. And then a folding table and chair to kind of conduct business. So those will all be from Amazon. Um, and then any extra advertisement and signage that I'm looking to get would be from Vistaprint. And then the textbooks are from ecampus.com. Um, I did a lot of research at, through the different websites that I could get books, and this ecampus.com was the cheapest option I could find. Um, so for my storage needs, I don't need, need to be able to store the storage bins, um, the folding table and chair, and so at the end of my days, I will be clearing out the bookshelves and putting the books in the bin. So the bookshelves do have the option to not be stored um, and be left in whatever space we're working out of, or they can be stored. Um, and then how I will do my inventory. So I will um, create an Excel spreadsheet, and I will be recording the book, um, or the name of the book, the course, the name of, or the end number and name of the student that is either buying or selling, and the ISBN number of the textbook. So my total expenses um, are projected around $3,304, and this is on the higher end, but I'm asking for $3,500 from the loan, and this extra um, $200 will help for either shipping costs or like anything that I kind of run into. And for my break even analysis, um, I will need to sell 51 textbooks to break even. And right now I'm looking at selling 30 textbooks to start off with the first semester and then increasing by five for the next two semesters. So after um, probably about halfway through second semester, I should be able to break even. And then for my income statement, so um, as I go on, again, I'm increasing the number of books that I'm going to be selling um, each semester. And then by the end, I will end up with a total profit of $371. So for my strengths and weaknesses, um, some of my strengths are a cheaper price, again, being on campus, and then it is an easy way to buy or sell your books. And then some weaknesses are, depending on um, the final hours of operation, I might have limited hours for some people, um, my competition, and being a new business, and just having to market my business really well. So for some of my opportunities, um, I can add more textbooks for different undergraduate courses, and I can also figure out which textbooks are selling the most and make sure to get more of those for the next semester or the next, um, yeah, the next semester. And then eventually if I am doing really well, I could ex expand to um, graduate <coughs> students and then expanding the hours at the beginning because I do think that's where I'm gonna sell most of my textbooks. So for the management, I am the only employee. Um, I was set up like the textbooks and the Excel sheet and everything around 15 to 20 minutes before opening. Um, and then depending on, I think, how the first three weeks and then the two weeks in the middle go, I will determine if I do need some extra help or anything like that. So after the three semesters are up, I am willing to sell my business. Um, but if the business isn't doing as well or no one really wants to buy it, I'm willing to sell um, the equipment and any of the other inventory that I do have. Thank you for any questions. So, I hate to say this, but I have, I have a suspicion, much like the Chartwell situation, one of the food, that you pretty much have an ex the university has an exclusive contract with Barnes and Noble for the the bookstore on campus, and it precludes competition. Yeah. Um, but that would be something to to make sure if you haven't already checked that to to, to check that out. That would be one thing. Um, you, you, 
I was just going to say, I mean, the library has used book sales and. And, and, that's, uh, and, and, I, and what, well, what I don't know about that is whether or not those are actual textbooks or not, mm -hmm. whether they're just simply other just random books that the, yeah. that the bookstore would not be selling as textbooks. Um, but usually that's the case. And once again, just, just follow through on that. But also, can you just walk us through like a typical textbook in terms of the how you're pricing it versus how the bookstore is pricing it versus how Amazon is pricing it? In I'm just trying to understand, you know, like for example, if, if your cost is a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. um, then uh, you know what is typically then the bookstore's price going to be or Amazon's price going to be, and so it all does depend, like both different books, different um, classes, all of that. But when I was doing most of my um, research, I did find that most used um, textbooks on either Amazon or Chet go for around. Um, anywhere from 30 to $60 um, to buy the used version. And then when you're looking at that same textbook in the bookstore, it's usually around 100. And that's like the, the lowest price that I did find. So I would be buying the textbooks from anywhere, again, to 30 to $60. And um, for my income statement, I um, priced them at 68 to $75. So I would be in the similar price range to Amazon and Chegg, but sure. I wouldn't, the students that are buying from me wouldn't have to wait a week, a week right. and a half for them to come in. So and now then, are you getting your inventory from former students or are you getting your inventory from an online service like Amazon? So to begin with, I'd be getting my inventory from um, eCampus. And so I would start out with around 30 books is what I okay. um, measured it out to be. And then I would be accepting any books that are obviously not like torn up or anything yep. from students and then again reselling those books. So they would pay, or I would pay them for their textbook and then that transaction would be done and then a new student can come in and buy that textbook and I would get those profits. I mean, I, I do think, I mean, the, the, the business model, you know, can make sense and I think, you know, really trying to focus on a couple of courses that don't change books very often and that, that everybody has to take, you know, as you say, you know, probably like math or science where, you know, that maybe they're, they're going to rotate the books maybe every few years as opposed to maybe every year. Yeah, that's why I was trying to focus in on Comp 1500 and 2000 because I know every person from last year to this year that I do know has had the same textbook. And then also um, like Math 1040, Bio 1, like those classes do keep pretty consistent um, Throughout the year, so. Because you know, normally we have to turn in textbook orders usually about six months or so in an advance. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I think you have to certainly be aware of is you know the changing of editions and then you know you don't want to get stuck with a bunch of inventory that you're not going to be able to get rid of. And so hopefully you've got, you know, would have a backup plan to be able to, I guess, put all of it on you know Amazon or eBay or whatever yeah. yourself to so what I would liquidate. Do yeah, um, is I, I'm trying to plan to set up meetings with either department chairs or like professors that do teach those courses so I can know what books they're using for next semester. And then I, if I did have leftover inventory, I would probably <coughs> sell to Amazon or Chegg or something like that, so. The, those were uh, mostly my can, uh, questions too. I wondered if you would be buying textbooks from students if, or, or if you're just going to buy them all from eCampus, um, how will you know what textbooks will be used? So I think it's really important that you find out and then what quantity of, of those books will you be ordering because they should probably have a pretty good idea of how many students will come through there based on your survey that 95% would buy from you. You might kind of come up with a middle of a number in the middle so you don't have too much inventory. Yeah, so I did um, base my income statement off 30 textbooks so that was only about 10 of each um, different subject or class that I was looking at so obviously that's not even one full class of students so I do think I once I meet with um, the department chairs or the, or the professors that I can get more of a um, like concrete number of how much I should be ordering. Because I mean you know, speaking you know as a professor that obviously we you know select books you know for our whole variety of different courses and mm -hmm. and one of the biggest challenges is the bookstore being sold out yeah. 
or it being only an option of an ebook whenever there are clearly you know hardback books available and, and at reasonable prices on Amazon that you know if, if it were allowed I would be all over the idea of having someone literally coming in the first day of each of my classes and saying hey I can sell you your textbook for yeah. you know seventy five dollars or you can go yeah. to the bookstore and pay a hundred or you can wait for two weeks or whatever on Amazon to get it, but I'll give it to you right now for you know seventy five and, and do the transaction and be done with it. But I just my concern is whether or not technically we can actually even yeah. do that. And uh, that's definitely something I do need to look further into. <coughs> okay, my question would be first: Have you thought about doing renting service as well? Yes. Yeah, so I have thought about um, doing rentals, but. To start off with, it just seemed more practical to have someone buy it and not mm. worry about like how long they're gonna have it for, you know, all yeah. that. But again, I do have months before I open, so that is something I'll definitely look into further. But also, you can do like checkouts as well. Yeah. Like some people don't even need their books the whole time; the they might just time. need them for the figures and scans and yeah. stuff like that. So that's something you can think about. Yeah. And then. Also, as far as your inventory, you can have any pricing next to those. I would su yeah. suggest sending that out so we okay. actually know where that amount came from. Yeah. I was like, we're done. Okay. <laughs> I, I will send that to you guys. All right. And then maybe send out your survey again so you can get some more response because just know your market. Yeah. And then upcharging as well because if you're saying you're matching Amazon prices, where where's your profit really coming from? Yeah. So, that's yeah. all mine. Any other questions? Um, just going back to what he was talking about, like, you know, on the first day of class, um, I can just sell you a for cheap, but I talk to, like, SI instructors. Okay. Um, I, I've only had SI, like, one in one of my classes, but yeah. I'm pretty sure that they all have, like, a group chat of all the students in the class. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe if you talk to them, you can just ask them to, like, tell them about it. Yeah. The first week or first day. That's a really good idea. Yeah, because it'd be nice if you could just go ahead and just you know have it pretty well planned, and you knew that you're going to have a hundred students yeah. enrolled in, in you know a couple of different sections of, of the same class with the same book, and and you could just you know just boom you know in, in one big transaction and pretty much be done with it. But I'm just concerned that there's going to be a, a blowback from the part of the, the the bookstore's contract with the university saying no, you know, not going to allow you to do that kind of thing. Well, I do have. Sort of backup plan for if that does happen. So, okay, 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 thanks, Mackenzie.